Monday marks the 49th Earth Day. Despite decades of warnings from climate scientists, the world is still struggling to cut CO2 emissions, the main driver of climate change. Now a handful of researchers and private companies are trying to fill in some of the gaps with what were once considered fringe ideas. This morning, Brooke Silva-Braga has a few of them. Brooke, good morning. Good morning, guys. We talk a lot about the need to cut emissions and with good reason, but I want to show you something from the United Nations Climate Panel illustrating what will happen with temperatures even if we end CO2 emissions completely by 2055. As you can see, temperatures rise and stay high for decades to come. And because of that disturbing reality, some climate ideas that were dismissed just a few years ago are now slowly gaining traction, but it is slow to find the best real world examples. We ended up having to travel to another continent. Up on the roof of an industrial plant outside Zurich, Switzerland, under the scaffolding and up a ladder, we found rows of circular vents, the first commercial scale facility bringing back what we all put up in the sky. This box is capturing CO2 directly from air. Just so here, out just in the here. air, it's grabbing the CO2 from the air. Yes. Collecting it. Exactly. Louisa exactly. Charles so represents Climeworks, one of a handful of startups neutralizing carbon dioxide by removing it and reusing it. We built here because we, on the one hand, have a source of energy. The source so is waste heat from a garbage incineration plant just below. Inside, we have a filter material, which is highly selective, so it captures only CO2. To make it a business, they needed buyers for the carbon dioxide, and they found their first one just a few hundred yards away, a greenhouse looking for fertilizer. This is a, a big cherry tomato. Taste it. I'm pretty good. And down the road, Professor Marcus Friedel has started using Climeworks Carbon to make fuel. In this reactor, we have uh, hydrogen and carbon dioxide going in, and out comes methane. The methane comes out of a gas pump at Rapperswil University of Applied Science and into a small fleet of cars. What would happen if I put methane in my car? It wouldn't go well, no. You don't have a methane car? Uh, not yet. Can I, can I get one? Yes, it's about 20 car models you can buy. Really? Run on methane. Friedel says the beauty of methane, as opposed to, say, an electric car, is the gas is easily stored. An electric battery relying on solar power in the Swiss winter would be hard to charge. Do you feel this is part of the solution to climate change? Yes, I, I'm very convinced that this is part of the solution for climate change. Yeah. For that, Climeworks will need more customers. And they got a big one on the day we visited last week. This truck was delivering captured CO2 to Coca-Cola. At a picturesque bottling plant in the Alps, their Swiss carbonated water, Valser, became the world's first bubbling with captured carbon. So these are some of the first bottles. Yeah, these are the first bottles. And of course, it tastes the same. So it's a normal CO2. It's just coming from the air. Patrick Wittweiler, Coke's sustainability manager in Switzerland, convinced the bosses it was worth paying Climeworks $600 a ton for CO2, which they could get elsewhere for almost nothing. Yeah, it's more expensive, but to change something and to support such a company, yeah, you have to invest a little more. But even all the CO2 in all those bottles is less than a drop in the climate bucket. The plant here uses 600 tons of CO2 a year. Humanity emits 37 billion tons. Each Climeworks scrubber removes about one ton a week. I looked it up, and I think my flight over here was like half a ton. Possibly, yeah. So it would take three days of one of these just to offset my flight to get here. That's a depressing number. <laughs> That's why we need more of them. But before you dismiss carbon removal, and you wouldn't be alone, consider this. These intergovernmental climate projections are counting on some of this working? Oh, yeah. National Geographic journalist Andrew Revkin has been following the climate story for decades. My journey on climate started in 1985. He's watched as years of failure to cut emissions forced governments into mathematical contortions to prove it was still possible to hit their CO2 targets and limit warming. 
So this concept emerged of negative emissions, like something that actually, it's a take back thing. It's you know, the only way to make the math work. The only way. This family of ideas is known as geoengineering. It could mean carbon removal, like Climeworks is doing, planting millions of trees, which of course consume CO2, even dumping iron into the ocean to jumpstart its natural CO2 absorption. But remember this graph that we showed you at the beginning. Even if we bring CO2 emissions to zero, temperatures could stay dangerously high for decades. And so Harvard professor David Keith has another idea. Deliberately reflecting away some sunlight. Dim the sun just a little bit. Dim the sun just a tiny little bit. We already know volcanic ash does something similar, but blocking out the sun on purpose? Take one last look at the sun, Springfield. It's the kind of thing the evil Mr. Burns would do on The Simpsons. And yet, spraying aerosols into the stratosphere and reflecting back some sunlight is probably also the cheapest, surest way to lower the global average temperature. There is a catch. You don't really care about global average temperatures. You care about whether there's a heat wave or whether your crops have enough water. So we know we can lower temperatures, but we don't know if it'll be equally distributed, what it'll do to rainfall, all these kind of hard to model outcomes. Exactly. Keith, who is also involved is in carbon removal through his company Carbon Engineering, has spent decades like studying what would happen if we dimmed the sun, but has run into massive resistance to even the smallest real world test. Much of the opposition comes from environmentalists. People who spent decades trying to fight for emissions cuts are terrified that if we let this topic out in the open, that people will use solar geoengineering as an excuse to keep emitting. They'll say, ah, oh, we got the problem solved. That's completely wrong. Your perspective is we need to do both. We absolutely have to walk and chew gum at the same time. That's the argument from Climeworks, too which is trying to dramatically scale up their capacity and bring down their costs. And they're working to not only recycle CO2 and soda and fuel, which is carbon neutral, but at this site in Iceland, actually bury it, making it carbon negative. If we're not examining all of these avenues, we'll always have that sense, I guarantee 10 or 20 years from now, of wow, why didn't we pay more attention to that option? Climeworks admits that to scale up to a truly meaningful size, there will have to be a price on CO2 emissions, basically a tax of several hundred dollars a ton that will make certain things like air travel significantly more expensive. So many wild cards uh, here. No. You got to confront it from all angles, it sounds like. One thing is not going to be the answer. And, and the point that everyone makes that we can't emphasize enough, this does not replace eliminating emissions. Right. It's in addition. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that graph said it all to me. I'm still wrapping my mind around the dim in the sun thing. Yeah.